One of the great things about riding Louisiana is that no matter where you go, you'll find great roads, interesting destinations, and sometimes you'll learn something special about the great state in which we live. Today, Brian Niebuhr and I headed south from Lafayette for a little Spanish history lesson in the heart of Cajun country with a touch of mystery thrown in for fun. While most of us are quite aware of the French influence in this area, early Spanish explorers also had much to do with developing this region. Back in 1799, 500 Spanish colonists from Malaga traveled up Bayou Teche and settled around a lake in this region. They named their new settlement for the Iberian Peninsula of their homeland, and the town of New Iberia was born. To really see and appreciate New Iberia, you have to get off the bike and walk. A lot of famous people are from New Iberia. Governor Kathleen Blanco is from here, as is famed Cajun artist George Rodrigue. Mystery writer James Lee Burke is from here, and New Iberia is where Burke's detective Dave Robichaux solves most of his crimes. Recently, actor Tommy Lee Jones played Robichaux in a movie version of one of Burke's novels, In the Electric Mist with Confederate Dead. There's much to see and do in New Iberia, lots of shops and great places to eat, but today the focus of our attention wouldn't be on Main Street at all. We had heard that something pretty incredible had taken place near here about 30 years ago, and we wanted to know more about it. Just a short ride west of New Iberia on LA-14, you'll come to a place called Jefferson Island. Now Jefferson Island isn't an island at all. It's actually an outcropping of land which rests on top of a geological formation called a salt dome. There are three major domes in this area, Avery Island, Weeks Island, and Jefferson Island. Jefferson Island is named for 19th century stage actor Joseph Jefferson. Jefferson purchased the land, then known as Orange Island, as a hunting lodge and summer retreat in 1870. Today, the house and lush gardens surrounding it are a popular tourist attraction, known as Rip Van Winkle Gardens named for one of Jefferson's most popular stage characters. Well, here we are, Rip Van Winkle Gardens. Never heard of it. So, let's take a look. Rip Van Winkle Gardens is actually a complex of sorts, consisting of a conference center, bed and breakfast, the gardens and house, and of course, a restaurant. Now, Brian and I are anxious to see everything and learn more about the incredible event that took place here in 1980. But first things first, we were hungry. The restaurant features a spacious dining room with a gorgeous view of nearby Lake Pinier. But on a beautiful day, you'll probably want to do what we did and pick one of the lakeside tables beneath the gorgeous oaks and Spanish moss. The moderately priced menu features everything from a variety of sandwiches to full-blown entrees. There's even a pretty good bowl of chili for you hardcore bikers. Mmm. What's that? That's called a loco. I ordered it because I think it fits me. Rip Van Winkle Gardens is a popular place for weddings, and one was being rehearsed as we enjoyed our meal. The rehearsal music provided a little lanyap to an already wonderful experience. Following our meal, Brian and I took a walk down to the lake. What a beautiful sight. Hard to believe that 30 years ago, this lake literally vanished one day. 